before we get too far into it, I wanted to break down Warhammer 40k. I, I had a second stream last night. We were playing. We were frying on the multiplayer. And the multiplayer for me is the most fun for that game. But that's just I'm a, a shooter kind of guy. I like my shooter. So it's going to be my quick Warhammer 40k review. The bad is the campaign is beautiful, but a little linear. And by a little, it is very linear with really no reward for it whatsoever and if you do kind of go out you can get like a data slab which is going to get you more information so i appreciate the follow olivia right now we're breaking down the warhammer 40k i don't know if you want to stay here for that but if you do be my guest but there's no explore there's like no exploring in the campaigns they're just straight missions kind of repetitive but i'm okay with it because it, it at the end of the day it was visually a like look at explore it was crazy good to look at but there was no real reward for exploring like in terms getting more in-game currency you can't buy in-game currency so it'd be nice like if you're exploring you see a little side area you break open a box you get to bring back uh, we need more enemies and pipes now as the game progresses we're gonna get more of this they already laid out uh, a roadmap at least for like presumably the first year of the game and we should be getting a new enemy type i'm gonna throw this out here for those who know i think it's gonna be a faction called the necrons which are basically like robot skeleton zombies that can come back after they're dead it could be really cool in terms of adding new mechanics because that is going to be another thing that i'm going to add to the bad section here where there's not a lot of enemy mechanics or mission mechanics maybe some variety there may be like three four different kind of mechanics in the game it'd be nice to see that at least doubled especially in today's day and age with technology and like the average gamers at a much higher level like we could figure shit out but I need more content overall, once more. As the as things roll out, we're going to continue to get more stuff by things, season, just season. As we get more seasons, they're going to be adding new guns, enemies, and stuff like that. I can't be the only one who's having this issue. Me being on PC, the only way that I could play these co-op missions or stuff like this is by qu pressing the quick play. If I try to manually select an operation, the game just crashes. I need to know, let me know down below or let me know in the chat. Are you guys experiencing this too? Maybe it's just me, but I might refund Space Marine 2 because this has to change. If it does it, I got to refund it. But currently, the multiplayer is only for PC or only on console. There is no cross-play. You can't, like, all my friends play on console, or at least all the ones that play this game are on console. They're all on Xbox, which is fine, right? But, like, I want to be able to play with them. It super sucks for us not to be able to have crossplay on that, but we can have crossplay on, on the co-op missions. It just doesn't make sense. On another, I, that is a good thing, or a, that's a bad thing, excuse me. Another thing that I don't like is that when I'm unlocking some of these cosmetics for my guns, which so far is just like a red, like Harry Potter sticker with a scroll on it, like that doesn't crook to the co-op mission. So if you're playing multiplayer and I'm working on building and making a cool ultramarine or a, what, a space marine, whatever factual, I'm making the best Warhammer 40k marine that I can. But then I go to multiplayer or to operations and it's two different kind of things. The, the actual marine color will be the same. But my loadout's going to be different because, yes, I understand that one has a perk tree, but cosmetically... That doesn't correlate like i should be able to have the same sniper that i unlocked in multiplayer that i do in co-op it's so dumb that it is not lastly the leveling in this game kind of sucks it's very slow very slow i've sunk about i don't know 10 hours into this and i don't even have like a max level sniper which is the class that i've been playing it's like bro well how like how long does it take to max level one thing because you have different kind of marines you could be tactical you could be assault be a defense guy you could be a bulwark like it just feels like feels like a chore leveling this up and honestly leveling up your marine and like i said earlier in the video you can't buy currency you can only get it by playing the game which honestly i'm cool with i'm down with it. i think that's pretty cool but holy heck is leveling up your marine and and getting this currency it, it feels like you're, and you're getting this currency to unlock colors and basic cosmetics and it feels like a chore and not a reward uh, for playing the game. I don't want to completely dunk on this because the good is great. Overall, the action is good. It's gripping. Uh, the game looks insane. However, I will note this as well. I had a buddy who was basically in my ear as I'm playing the campaign, kind of giving me the lore, making me appreciate the world that I was in way more. So if you didn't have that in your ear, you're probably going to think, holy crap, how did we actually get here? How did the human race actually get to this spot? But... 
Lastly, the last thing we want to talk on is the multiplayer feels like a 2006 Gears of War Xbox game. And honestly, I'm here for it. The multiplayer feels good. It's simple. It's refreshing. It's fun. But holy heck, on crossplay. <sighs> we have the Force Gaming who says, we need to talk about Warhammer 40k Space Marines 2. So we're just... Yeah. Uh, I gave you guys my two cents. But now let's let's see what Force has to say because I, I have a funny feeling we're gonna kind of be in the same same ballpark. So as you probably know, Space Marine Two recently released. And Mom didn't say bye. Well, the game reached a peak player count of 134,000 concurrent on Steam, which put it in ah. 15 games on the platform for the week, which in and of itself isn't bad. But there's no, it's a, it's a beta. It's a beta. It's great. Sorry, we have I have the our Roomba going on in the background. We already have androids in the house. So we're living in the future. Additional points are worth adding. For one, this was. Sorry, hold on. I'll uh. We'll edit this out of the actual YouTube video of this. This is the pay extra for earlier access release with the lowest available option option ringing up at 90 US dollars so i expect that ah, the rich tax people who are waiting until the official launch on monday which is priced at the standard 60 USD this will at the very least bring another surge of players if not surpassing the prior peak either way though let's be honest it's just the poor it's the rich and the poor can the rich play the game early aha we bet we can we are not a part of the poor it's uh, quite impressive for the franchise because <laughs> you have to consider point number two, and that is that 134,000 concurrent players officially put Space Marine 2 just behind Total War Warhammer 3 as the second most popular Warhammer game to launch on Steam ever, and that is awesome. Putting aside my general dislike for the whole pay us extra money to play the game earlier than those who don't trend, we've been seeing this across the entire industry, and I don't love it ever, but those marketing and sales tactics aside, the game itself, what do I think of it? Well, I think it's very good. Like, fact is, I actually think it's the best Warhammer game I've ever played as far Agreed. as far as I'm concerned. In terms of its gameplay, its production value, the world building, the sheer badassery of the whole thing, it is really, it's a great Warhammer game. I mean, I've just thoroughly enjoyed Space Marine 2. It's not a perfect game. There's plenty no. of room for improvements, but I have generally loved my time. Foundation of it, just like with the first Ascendant, the foundation of it? Pretty good. With it thus far, even more so now that the PvP is up and running, which has been stupid good fun, by the way. It's rather simple and straightforward, not a lot to it, but it's still fun. And yeah, so yep. for all those reasons, I'm quite happy to see that the game is doing well right now. Now, the critic I'm reviews, all, they've sort of I been a mixed all bag. Of this. They do lean positive. Currently, the game's averaging a score of 83 on Metacritic and also an 83 on Open Critic, with it getting a 91% critic rate. If you guys were on my, like, secret little stream last night, I gave this game a solid 8 out of 10. Actually, I was being spiteful because I said it was a 7.8, because originally I said it was a 6 just because of the campaign. I didn't realize it was a fast travel system, so I was just walking everywhere, and the movement speed is slow as fuck, so I was like, dude, this is ass. But once I figured out there's a fast travel system, I, my score went drastically up recommendation. The reviews range from being in the 80s and 90s to the lowest score from a major publication being 60, and that came from both PC Gamer and PC Games N. Now, even for all my various critiques of I mean, Screen 2, which I do have a few, it was curious to see scores quite that low. 6 out of 10, I don't know, it just doesn't jive with me, right? Now, the TLDR of my review was that I really like the game, I think it does a ton of things right, and I would recommend it to people with a few caveats and exceptions. However, for me, the pros outweigh the cons. And those pros include the gameplay being really good, like exceptionally good. I'd consider the moment-to-moment -moment combat in Space Marine 2 to be like a 10 out of 10. Just the whole process of mowing through hordes of Tyranids and Chaos Marines, they knocked it's it fun. out of the park. You are yeah. constantly surrounded by an insane number of enemies, fighting your way through, cleaning And you never feel ones, like you're overwhelmed. Flashing on the bigger ones, timing your parries and dodges, to get perfect counters while also keeping an eye out for interrupts for dodging sniper fire and for aiding your teammates when they need help all of this coupled with the over-the-top finishers that break up the action just the whole thing it's very enjoyable it is visceral and it all has a real nice flow to it honestly it's one of the better combat systems in a third person action game that i've played in a while i just really really like it and as someone who isn't even into the franchise it's also pretty clear to me that they have nailed this whole space marine fantasy i mean you are playing okay, as what is cool. essentially a lumbering I'm, bringer of like, death stomping your way through levels and yeeting played, everything that is in your path into as a kid i actually played the tabletop game so so it's like I have a very surface level understanding of the world, but to actually be able to see, like, play the characters that I played as a tabletop game, it's fantastic. 
through this alternate dimension death they're all dying while at the same time all of this like over the top crazy stuff is happening there are just so many moments where all around you off in the distance and up in the skies there are just swarms and swarms of literally thousands of enemies with explosions going off everywhere last and bulk on fire constantly raining while you and your team is stomping ever forward smashing your way through those masses in my review I said it feels like the personification of playing through like a death metal album short of something like metal Hellsinger Space Marine 2 that's is exactly very fair vibes. that's very with fair that, as well the world building here is top notch the developer clearly has done a great job and has a passion for representing the grim oppressive feeling as well as the massive scale of just about everything in the 40k universe these towering gothic inspired structures that pierce through the clouds those never-ending waves of enemies pouring through the streets and filling up the skies while you and your allies as well as your artillery there to meet them in a bombastic show just the visuals the sounds all the set pieces and all the action that's taking place it is pretty amazing from start to finish as far as that is concerned and then the game ran well for me and performance was really good outside of a few notice noticeable hitches here and there for the I started most part, to have issues last butter, night although i do have a high-end pc and from what i've read and heard not everyone's performance has been great now for all of that in oh. mind there are some cons uh, starting with a few of the smaller gripes i had like the lack of fov slider this is especially noticeable playing on pc uh, do you like having yes. a P.O. box but are tired of wasting time and money driving to the post office? Uh, the game does have this like dynamic camera where it will change positions based on what's occurring on the screen and at its very worst your character can easily take up a fourth if not a third of the entire frame the whole screen which is just a bit much but yes at all times i think an fov slider that lets me extend my field of view that would be very very welcome another con is this inconsistent feel to the parry system which just resulted in me dodging most of the time because it was far more reliable and far less punishing even if you didn't have perfect timing at least you dodged away from the damage rather than sitting there in an animation that missed and then getting hit i felt the campaign pacing was just a little off with lots of stops to the action, lots of fades to black, and downtime with the abundant use of corridors and elevators all throughout. And also the game has what I would consider- Yes, thank you, thank you. I had same shit. Consider a fairly almost artificial feeling drawn out PVE class progression. It took us roughly 30 hours on average to reach max level on a single- 30 hours? I'm at like 10. And that's, I'm still on par with that. It should take about, it sh I should be max level for my sniper. Now I should be moving on to something else. And get all the different guns. It's way too slow, man. Speed it up. Which in and of itself wouldn't be a problem if not for what is my biggest issue with the game currently, and that is its content variety. The game's just a Boom. bit on the lighter side. We're on the same, the same page. Variety of content. There's nothing yeah. else to it. Uh, the campaign took us just under six hours playing on hard, which people thought was fast at the time of the review. I got that feedback. But now that the game is out in the wild, it seems like many other players are also finishing in that six to eight hour range. So most of your time it and took most me of about six hours. Space Marine 2 is going to come from the other modes, those being the PvE co-op operations and the competitive PvP. The PvP is a lot of fun. I really enjoy it and it's for those my, the do, most great. fun it's of the game simple and straightforward to me it's, this is where i'm having the most fun you got teams of six competing on a handful of maps in one or three modes that amount to racking up kills or controlling zones it's been fun simple but fun it's a nice mode to mess around with but i'm also aware that not everyone cares about pvp in which case after the campaign what you have left is the pve co-op operations so there are six missions in total which you will run over and over again you do this to level up your classes unlocking new perks and weapons making you stronger and this lets you push the difficulty higher from tiers one two to three and four but beyond the enemies getting tougher and a more frequent occurrence of the mini bosses not much changes from the easiest to the hardest difficulty it is the same missions that have the exact same level layout every time the corridors the halls the open areas it is all always exactly the same it's just the mix of enemies that you get their placements what types of them that will change from run to run and then of course the higher the difficulty the harder they are they deal more damage they kill you faster etc etc now the game yeah, plays the amazing. Normal stuff. like i said i love playing space marine 2 and i do recommend the game it's just the one major caveat being the fact that it is on that lighter side of content so depending on your appetite for the pve operations grinding those or for playing pvp your mileage a aka your playtime may vary quite a lot. Now they do have some big updates planned with more content coming, but that's happening in time, not at this very second. As yeah, we, we will get a lot of updates technically by the end of the year, but I have a funny feeling for most people, this is going to be a game that it's very hard to main. Not a lot of content. You're going to be doing the same stuff over and over and over again. This is going to be a great game for me when I'm like playing Call of Duty and I'm like caught it out. I, I play it for like a four hour session. I'm like, okay, I need to play something different. I'm probably going to go to Space Marines. For a while, it was the first Ascendant, uh, and right now, it, it's been Deadlock, honestly. I've been going back and forth with Deadlock, but Space Marines is definitely going to be one of these games I play maybe once or twice a week in rotation. 
for myself, um, I've already played over 50 hours and counting. I will be playing a bit more over the next week for sure. Specifically, I'm planning to spend more time with the PvP. And I'll be totally happy if I finish this game at around a 60 or 70 hour mark because, hey, not every game needs to last forever or be a live service with thousands of potential hours of content. But I yeah, also understand exactly. that not everybody feels that way, which is why I bring it up. It's why I talk about it because the game does clearly have a limited scope and limited content variety. People's budgets for gaming are different and there's plenty of people out there who are looking to maximize the bang for their buck and I get that. Uh, not every game can, can fulfill that and I don't think Space Marine 2 really does but again, to me, that's totally fine. I just need people to be aware if that's not the case for them. Now that the game is officially out, the user reviews have also started pouring in. On launch day, they started off at a mixed rating but it has since been climbing and currently actually sits at mostly positive with a 77% as of this recording. If you're curious, by the way, the threshold here is 70. So below 70%, down all the way to 40, a game will have a mating of rating of mixed. And then once you reach 70, it tips over to mostly positive. And then from 70 to 80%, at 80%, it bumps into just plain old positive. Now, I believe on launch day, that mixed score was something like a 66 or 67. It was around there. So it's already climbed 10 points all the way up to 77%. And I think there's a good chance it, it gets those additional three points and at least breaks the 80% threshold, tipping it over into a flat out positive <laughs> rating. Because yes, it is a good game is overall, what I can, literally. shortcomings. Uh, user reviews have seemed to mostly echo the main points that I had in my review in terms of the positive sides of the game. Although obviously you also, on top of that, have the whole dedicated 40k fandom in here who are far more invested and fanatical about the franchise than myself. So there's a whole lot of like for the emperor being shouted in the re user reviews. It's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. My buddy was saying that the whole time was just for the emperor, for the emperor. Like I said earlier, when I was doing the campaign, one of my buddies is a diehard fan. He read the books, watches the animated series, does, follows the YouTubers. Um, and he was giving me all the lore, like just lore dumping in my ear in real time as I was playing. Made me appreciate the campaign a lot more. It's kind of funny. And honestly, good on him. I'd say it's about time. As I mentioned earlier, Space Marine 2 is officially the second most successful Warhammer game to come to Steam in terms of concurrent players. Even though there's been quite a lot of Warhammer games, many of them didn't turn out so great. So I think it's awesome that Warhammer 40k fans and just Warhammer fans in general are finally getting some good games for their favorite IP. Now, beyond all the positives and the negatives covered in my review, there have been some additional launch specific pain points that have cropped up. So these include being matched into lobbies with a duplicate class to the one that you've selected. Okay, so there are six classes in the game. They fill different roles. They got different play styles and special abilities and weapons they can use. And in the PvE operations, there can only be one of each class per squad. Now, when we played the game for review, this wasn't a problem. My friends and I, we all just picked separate classes. We played it and we liked what we played, right? However, now that launch is here, people are picking the class that they want to play. So let's just say it's the bulwark. And then they are matchmaking into operations and they are getting placed into teams that already have a bulwark, which then forces the joining player to pick a different class. Now, seeing as they have like, selected a class before they even enter matchmaking, the obvious solution here would be to not match people with a squad that already has the class that they have selected in it. Or at the very least, give players the option yeah. to do so, even if that means a slightly increased queue times. To Total. Actually, you know what? Maybe I have, and I just didn't realize it, and maybe that's why I'm not able to queue into some of these co-op missions. It's because we have, like, two snipers, and I'm not even realizing it. That could very well be it, because I have not been able to run a lot of co-op missions, because it would just either crash or just never load when I try to run it into a smaller pool of players, right? So hopefully this is something that they can address soon because I've seen this complaint uh, crop up quite a lot. Speaking of matchmaking, it has had some issues with the servers likely loaded these first few days. Matching has been inconsistent, if not downright broken at times. Even yep. just loading into the game, like even just getting into the battle barge has been difficult during certain times of day. It's just not happening. And then you have the people attempting to join an operation or to queue into PvP and simply not finding any matches, just forever spinning the wheel, essentially. And this isn't due to lack of players. There's over 100,000 peak players playing every day, but the matchmaking I mean, they try the uh, jetpack last more. Properly, and that's likely due to overload so this isn't an uncommon issue but it is nevertheless annoying whenever it happens although it is likely to smooth out over the coming week so we're hope for that another one of the recurring complaints that i've been seeing is the fact that the ai teammates are just bad like something that i didn't notice in my review because i played with real people but now that the game is out and players are trying to solo the harder difficulties with an ai squad apparently it's not good not, not even they're just really really bad they don't work with you at all they tend to not stick to the objective and they deal what seems like negative damage i do remember that from my preview the other month now on the plus side it does seem like they never die and they will res you almost instantly if you go down but that doesn't clearly make up for all that they're lacking considering why
how many people prefer to play games like this solo, hopefully they can address this soon. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind would be allowing you to issue commands to your AI teammates, even if it's just like a focus fire command, even if you could yeah. just tell your two squad members to shoot focus. a particular target, I think that would add a lot. In fact, the game already has a ping system, so maybe they could just move this functionality into that as well. Another big thing I saw people complaining about was the fact that the game automatically installs the Epic Online Services. So the developer has stated that this was done in order to support the optional crossplay between Steam and Epic players, as well as to synchronize friends lists between the two stores. The fact that they installed this additional like supportive software in addition to the game does not bother me at all, but I know there's people who really don't like this sort of thing. If it does bother you, as far as I've read, you can totally uninstall the Epic Online Services and the game will still function properly. Yeah. It's I don't just give you up. won't have that like Steam to Epic. I don't give a fuck. Epic game store synchronization. But if you don't care, apparently you can still run the game without it by installing the game and then uninstalling Epic Online Services. Now, while the game did run perfectly fine for me in terms of performance, it hasn't been universal, as I mentioned. Some users have reported issues with the game, ranging from fluctuating frame rates and random stuttering to outright hard crashing to desktop, obviously something that we hopefully address. And then finally, uh, the final big consistent complaint that I'm seeing is the lack of FOV slider. Now that was in my review, but I want it so badly, I just had to bring it up again. Just please, for the love of God, give us an FOV slider. Hey, and for a third time, I, I agree with the first time he said it and the second time he said it and the reviews. Please give us an FOV slider. That, that, that's, uh, that's it. Not much else to say. Just give us an FOV slider. All right, so the PvP, um, when we did the review, if you recall, the matchmaking servers, they were down prior to launch. We just couldn't test the PvP at all. But now that the game is out, we have been able to play it. Yep. I spent a couple of days with it, and yep. I'm happy to say it's good. I like it's it fun. a lot. It is simple and straightforward, but rather fun. It kind of feels like an old-school PvP game. There's three basic modes. You got what? What did I say? It's simple. It's refreshing. It's fun. It feels like a 2006 Gears of War Xbox game. It's fun. It's 2024, and it feels like a fun version of a 2006 old Xbox game. I love it. But is Team Deathmatch, the first to 50 kills wins. You got Domination, where you capture a zone that moves throughout the match, try to cap out the points, you win. And then King of the Hill, which is the same thing. And instead of the moving zones, there are three static zones. Try to capture them. Domination. The you win. Now, the PvP certainly isn't as robust as, like, dedicated PvP games. And like I said, it is pretty darn simple. But it's a nice additional game mode on top of the PvP. It's the most fun that I'm having I with like this it. game. I like it as a, as a way to mix things up. The gameplay feels also quite different than when you're playing the campaign or when you're playing the PvE operation. Feels the most fun. Mainly, there's a much shorter time to kill here. And then also... Also, there's some mechanical differences like for example melee bypasses armor so when you're shooting a character it deals armor damage and then health damage oh. but when you melee a character it goes straight to health it ignores whatever armor that they have that's, I, that's good an to interesting know. Uh, balance decision and i've seen a lot of people saying that melee is really bad but i don't think it is i think if you know how to properly utilize it you could come up to a character who doesn't have a lot of health but then they're had replenished their armor say from a banner from a bulwark character and if yeah. they don't have a lot of health but they have a lot of armor don't shoot them just melee them you're going to instantly go to their health and kill them probably straight away so yeah simple straightforward but it isn't Enjoyable. It's been fun messing around for yeah, a Yeah, I've had fun with I it as well. I've this for at least a few more afternoons with my friends. Now, as Agreed. for the extended thoughts after launch, you know, I've had some more time to sort of ruminate and think about the game, digest everything. The general sentiment that I had in my initial review, it stands. I think the game is quite good. It's definitely the best 40K game that I've ever played. While it is fairly limited in terms of that longer term replayability, if that's something you're looking for, keep that in mind. The launch version of the game doesn't necessarily have a ton of replayability, but just as a base experience, like playing through the campaign, grinding some PV co op operations with your friends, and then playing some PvP, you can easily get a good 20 40 50 plus hours out of the game like yeah, it totally that. delivers that but it's not going to be a 100 200 300 thousand plus hour live service game that's not what they are aiming for and that's not what this game delivers i will say the and if that's the case that's not the goal of the game is to be this live service thing then even my criticisms of the game which are geared mostly towards that is it's not bad and if, it, if you guys wanted to see this is what i actually like had written down for it like bad campaign the beautiful very linear Need more enemy types, mechanics, overall missions, all of this stuff. Like what we went over at the beginning of it, but let me know what you guys think. 